Mm -hmm. Good, start. Okay, cool. Uh, hi, today I will talk to you about crystal language, but first because uh, before we get to this topic, a little bit of introduction. So all the languages that we're using, be it the spoken languages like English or being programming languages are inspired by others. Uh, every single language that you know has some words, some grammar structures, some influence uh, from, from the other languages. So in English, even though it might be difficult to believe, we have some words from Japanese, from Chinese, and even from East Frisian, which is language from, I don't know, probably Middle East. Uh, the, same, the same with programming languages. So when Ruby was created, Matt had a few inspirations. He really liked Perl, but he wanted to create better Perl. So Ruby is a scripting language. Matt really loved Emacs and the, the Lisp that you can use to program Emacs. So Ruby has closures. And then everything in Ruby is an object, which is an idea taken from Smalltalk. So as languages are inspired by other languages, then when they are mature, they also provide some information. They, they are copied to other languages. So words from English are used in, in various different languages, like Polish, Spanish, or even Japanese. And how about Ruby? There are different languages that use be it syntax or methods names or some grammar constructs from Ruby. So there is Groovy, which is a language working on Java Virtual Machine. There is Elixir, which was created by Jose Valim, who is a core team uh, member of, of Ruby on Rails and now created his own language. And there is Crystal, which is the topic of my today's talk. So in this talk, I will try to tell you about the language, and I will try to answer the question if Crystal, the language heavily influenced by Ruby, can be the next Ruby, or is it a totally misguided idea? Just a brief information. The project started in 2012, uh, but it's still unstable. The current version is 0.7.4, so it's just three years old, uh, and it hasn't gained a lot of popularity yet. Crystal is totally written in Crystal, so you can go to GitHub, you can read in source code, and you can see that the whole language is written in itself. It started being written by, in Ruby, but when the language reached some level of maturity, uh, they switched the compiler, uh, they switched the whole source code to Crystal language. It still has unstable NPI, API, which has some consequences about, about which I will, I will talk later. Uh, and one important point is that syntax is inspired by Ruby, and probably the word inspired is a bit of uh, underestimation. So why should, we, why should we think about other languages? If we have something like Ruby with amazing, beautiful syntax, with lots of great features, be it, for example, metaprogramming, with fantastic community full of very active developers and plenty of libraries. Some of the libraries that are now available in uh, lots of different languages actually started in Ruby. For example, there is a library called VCR, which records HTTP responses and later caches them. This started as a project created in Ruby and later was ported to Python, PHP, and various other languages. So Ruby community is very active, very creative, and creates lots of fantastic projects. But Ruby, except for its strengths, has problems. Speed is a very well-known problem in Ruby, and even though with every new version, we hear that Ruby is becoming faster and faster. You can meet a lot of people who started rewriting their code base to languages like Rust or Go just because they are so much faster. Another issue is concurrency. Uh, we all know that Ruby doesn't handle well threads. And there are different opinions, there are different plans how to solve it in the next version. But for now, it is a big problem in the language. Then reopening classes, which is considered a great feature of the language and fantastic idea, but it can cause lots of unexpected problems. If you require a module that overrides core class, you may unex unexpectedly have, have some errors or some problems with your code. And the code in Ruby, even though it is really beautiful, it becomes hard to maintain uh, for various reasons that I will mention later in my talk. Crystal's approach to these problems are first, compiler. So we achieve speed by executing bytecode. We do not have an interpreter that, uh, that interprets the code on the fly when it's executed. 
So first you have to compile Crystal's code and it uses LLVM, which is a set of compiler tools. So how it works is that Crystal code is compiled to intermediate language, which then is compiled to native bytecode for your machine. It's, it makes it much faster than any interpreted language. Then, instead of working with threads and processes, you are working with abstractions like routines and channels, which I will mention later. Another interesting idea is that you have optional types, which prevent you from, for example, providing nil and having a crash that every one of us has seen thousands of times. And then macros, which are kind of replacement for meta pro metaprogramming. So when I mentioned that Crystal syntax is influenced by Ruby or inspired by Ruby, what I really meant is that it is a valid Ruby syntax. So this is valid Crystal code, and except for one small exception here, if you, code, if you copy this code and paste and run as a Ruby file, it would, it would run. So we define methods with the keyword dev. We use uh, instance variables use at in, in front of them and class variables use double at in front of them. We have keywords like if and unless. We have blocks, blocks to which pro we provide variables exactly the same way. And we have lambdas and procs, which we call by putting dot call. The only difference here is this one question mark. So this actually uh, is to, to the whole phrase. So if you use square brackets with question mark in the end, it is valid crystal syntax, while in Ruby, this is beginning of trinary operator, so you need to have some expression and then colon and another expression to be valid code. But this is just a, just a small difference. There are a few more differences, which is, as I mentioned, optional types. So you can write a few methods with the same name and specify what types does this method accept. It can be either a single type it can be a list of types, like in the second example, or it can be no type, which means that method will accept any, any argument. Another interesting alternative, uh, the difference between Ruby and Crystal is something called struct. So it is basically the same as a class. So for user, there is, there, for developer, there is really no difference. The only, the only thing that differentiates struct from class is that it is allocated on the stack instead of on a heap which makes it much faster. So when you, provide, uh, when you pass an object as an argument to a function, in Ruby it is always passed by reference. While uh, in Crystal, if it's, a, if it's a class, it's passed by reference, but if it's a struct, it's passed by value. This is just an optimization. So if you want to have some small objects that you need to pass around very fast, you just use structs. Instead of at reader, writer, and accessor, we've got getter, setter, and property. And instead of providing a symbol as an argument, you provide the name of, of, of the getter or setter. We have a class called tuple, which is basically an array, but it has a limited size. So when you create a tuple with three elements, it will always have three elements. It, it cannot grow bigger. And this is something that I really love. In Ruby community, there are constant arguments about whether to use single or double quotes. And there are, each side has, its, uh, has, has their advantages. But in Crystal, it is solved a different way. If you use double quotes, it's a string. If you use single quote, it's just a single character. So the problem is solved on the level of the language syntax. As I mentioned before, Crystal is compiled language. It doesn't have an interpreter. What does it mean? Probably most of you have used some compiled language like C, Java, or uh, or C++ in your life, uh, but, but maybe not everyone has used it. So in Ruby, I can write code like this. I have a method called add to array, and this method adds new element, then uh, adds all the elements together and divides them by, by two. If I provide the number, be it uh, integer or float, it will of course work. But if I provide a string as an argument here, it will crash. And the moment that it will crash will be when I run the program. So I have no idea if my program is correct or not until I execute it, or unless I write tests. Having compiler, uh, Crystal will first throw an error here. If you create an empty array, you have to specify a type. But you don't have to do it if you provide some elements in the beginning. So if I put an integer or a string here, the array will have type integer or string. But if, if it's an empty array, 
I need to provide types. Then the second error will appear because it appears that there is no sum method for an array that contains strings. So to fix it, I need to remove string from my list of arguments. And then if I provide a string as an argument to my function, there is another compiler error because my, uh, because my array contains only of integers. So it cannot hold any string. And only after I fix all these errors, my program will, will compile. So then it is the moment when, where, when I can run it. It has its advantages and disadvantages. One of the main points of using compiler is that it prevents program from crashing during runtime. And because of that, you don't have to write so many unit tests as in, as in interpreted languages. The third big issue with, uh, with Ruby is concurrency. And currently, we have threads and processes. So when you write Ruby code, you operate directly on this very low level abstraction that's very close to the, uh, to the operating system. Unfortunately, you cannot execute multiple threads at the same time because Ruby has global virtual machine lock, uh, which makes it that one thread logs the whole code and prevents other threads from executing it. This is because when Matt created Ruby, he had an idea of making programmers happy. And he said that threads don't make programmers happy. They make programming uh, very difficult. And he wanted to solve this problem, so, so it is solved this way. But over the years, programmers realized that our machines are not getting faster anymore. Instead, we are getting more processors, more cores. So we need to, ha we need to be able to handle concurrency and parallelism in a much better way. So there are lots of different ideas on how it will be solved in Ruby 3. But there is still at least a few years until this version of language will be released. And it is still not known how this problem exactly will be solved. So when I want to, when I want to run concurrent code in Ruby, I operate directly on these on this very low level abstractions. While in Crystal, we are using channel and routines that are inspired by Go language. However, it is still on a very, very early stage. So even though channels and routines work, underneath the virtual machine, uh, the, the runtime doesn't create new threads automatically. So basically, at this point, it is not better than Ruby at all, except that probably by the 1.0 version, it will already have this problem solved. So right now, I can do something like this in Crystal. So I spawn some, some routines, I create a channel, and I send variables to the channel. And this channel in, a, in this loop receives the information and then, then, then puts some text. But as I said, this will, this will run uh, synchronously. This will not spawn multiple threads, and it will not be uh, spread across multiple cores automatically. Ruby is very well known for metaprogramming. Because it's an interpreted language, you can actually accept a string from, from user, and you can evaluate it as a source code. Whether it is a good idea or not, I, I leave it up to you. But Ruby is very well known, and there are even books talking only about metaprogramming in Ruby. So I can do something like this. I can have a bunch of strings, and for each of them, I can define a method. And then I just define whatever, whatever I want in this method. Uh, Ruby has also some lower level metaprogramming, like just the infamous eval function. So I can, ev I can call eval. I can provide any string as a parameter, and it will be re executed as Ruby code. Because Crystal is compiled language, it cannot create, it cannot uh, interpret the code on the fly. The idea to solve it is to use macros. So this is not as beautiful as Ruby. Uh, it is quite limited, to be honest. And probably lots of people who really like metaprogramming will not be able to fully enjoy the idea of macros in Crystal. But it will solve most of the cases where you need to dynamically create methods or when you have a method missing. Some of the macros are already predefined, like define method or, or method missing. Uh, but this is the syntax that allows you to create your own macros. And then you can define your own methods using strings. One limitation here is that you cannot provide a variable instead of this string. It has to be hard coded in your code. It cannot be variable uh, because then you have to uh, 
because Crystal doesn't know what this variable might be. It might be a string, it might be nil, it might be something else. And because it's typed language, it cannot handle it. There are many more things uh, about Crystal that are already available, but I don't really have much time to talk about them in this presentation. And to be honest, I don't really, I don't really feel confident enough to talk about them. So you can write C functions directly using Crystal. Uh, so you can just use any available library and, and bind it to your program. There, is a, there are pointers that are con considered very unsafe, uh, but if you're good le low-level programmers, maybe, maybe you can have some advantage of using them. You have type reflection, which means that variables can, can ask, answer your question if they respond to some method. There is method called finalize, which will be run on an object just before it is garbage collected. There are some generics and there are attributes uh, which, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't dug into yet. Uh, but there are some interesting ideas that definitely will make the language more powerful in the future. So, is Crystal worth, worth trying? Uh, I'm not authority, I'm not very proficient in many programming languages, but there is a guy who says that it is worth trying. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt himself supports development of Crystal. Right now there is, uh, there is the uh, fundraising. Uh, it has just started like two or three days ago and, and Matt actively supports Crystal. So I'm not sure why either he, he sees it as a, as a great development of ideas that started in Ruby or, or maybe he doesn't think that the language is a, is a competitor. I don't know. Anyway, if Matt supports it, then probably it's a good idea. <laughs> So why did I check out Crystal? Why do I think that it's interested, interesting languages? So if you need to make your Ruby code a bit faster, you can just save it as a Crystal file and, and run, uh, run in a compiler. And you've got executable file that in like some 80, 90% will be a correct, correct Crystal code. The source code is very easy to understand. It is something that for me, it's very difficult in Ruby because if I read Ruby code, I feel like stupid because I barely know C. Uh, so if I want to understand some Ruby code, usually I go to Rubinius, but Rubinius is not always up to date with the newest Ruby version. So Crystal is written entirely in Crystal, which means that if you understand Ruby, you can go to the GitHub uh, to, and, and very easily read its source code. Then the concurrency abstraction, when finally version 1.0 is released, they sh it should be able to handle the concurrency, the parallel is much better than Ruby has at this point. And uh, if you go to the Google mailing group of Crystal Lang, you can see many interesting discussions about how to uh, introduce new syntax, whether the old syntax should change, how to, s how to tackle certain problems. So Ruby is very mature language. It is over 20 years old and Crystal is very young. So it's interesting to observe and to read how the, how the language is created. Uh, you can do the same with some other languages that are very early like Elixir or Rust, but these are written in low level languages, uh, which makes it much more difficult to, to read their source code. I wouldn't recommend to use Crystal in production right now because it is still very early stage. And maybe when the new version is released, your code will not run anymore. There is also lack of documentation. Uh, so of course you can read source code and it's very easy, but it takes much more time than just reading well-written documentation. There are a few libraries. Uh, the most popular library, except for the language itself, has like 150 stars on GitHub. So as you see, the community is still very small, uh, but there is already web framework and there is already library that connects Crystal with PostgreSQL so you can write some small web application. And the last reason why I do not recommend it is that if you want to learn something new, uh, you should go as far from Ruby as possible. You should learn something like Rust or Erlang or, or maybe it's something totally different like Julia. Uh, so Crystal is too similar to Ruby to really broaden your horizons. Uh, but anyway, I think this is language that has some future and I'm really looking forward uh, to, see, to see the next versions. So you can go to the website crystal-lang.org. You can check the documentation. If you find some bug, you can fix the documentation and you can join the very small but 
the community of very early stage of a language. So there are lots of chances, lots of opportunities to shape how the language looks like and to help it grow. Thank you for listening. Questions?